Poems on Various Subjects, Religious and Moral, by Phyllis Wheatley. To Messinus Messinus, you beneath the myrtle shade, read o'er what poets sung and shepherds played. What felt those poets, but you feel the same? Does not your soul possess the sacred flame? Their noble strains your equal genius shares in softer language and diviner airs. While Homer paints low circumfused in air, celestial gods in mortal forms appear. Swift as they move, here each recess rebound. Heaven quakes, earth trembles, and the shores resound. Great sire of verse, before my mortal eyes, the lightnings blaze across the vaulted skies. And as the thunder shakes the heavenly plains, a deep-felt horror thrills through all my veins. When gentler strains demand thy graceful song, the lengthening line moves languishly along. When great Patroclus courts Achilles' aid, the grateful tribute of my tears is paid. Prone on the shore he feels the pangs of love, and stern Pelides' tenderest passions move. Great Maro's strain in heavenly numbers flows, the nine inspire, and all the bosom glows. O oh, could I rival thine and Virgil's page, or claim the muses with the Mantuan sage? Soon the same beauty should my mind adorn, and the same ardors in my soul should burn. Then should my song in bolder notes arise, and all my numbers pleasingly surprise. But here I sit and mourn a groveling mind, that fain would mount and ride upon the wind. Not you, my friend, these plaintive strains become, not you, whose bosom is the muse's home. When they from towering Helicon retire, they fan in you the bright immortal fire. But I, less happy, cannot raise the song. The faltering music dies upon my tongue. The happier Terence, all the choir inspired, his soul replenished and his bosom fired. But say, ye muses, why this partial grace to one alone of Afric's sable race? From age to age transmitting thus his name, with the finest glory in the rolls of fame? Thy virtues, great Messenus, shall be sung in praise of him from whom those virtues sprung. While blooming wreaths around thy temples spread, I'll snatch a laurel from thine honored head. While you, indulgent, smile upon the deed, as long as Thames in streams majestic flows, or Naiads in their oozy beds repose, while Phoebus reigns above the starry train, while bright Aurora purples o'er the main. So long, great sir, the muse thy praise shall sing, so long thy praise shall make Parnassus ring. Then grant, Messenus, thy paternal rays, hear me propitious, and defend my lays. The End Read by Lorraine Montgomery for Lit to Go on the Web at fcit.usf.edu. Poems on Various Subjects, Religious and Moral by Phyllis Wheatley. On Virtue. O oh, thou bright jewel, in my aim I strive to comprehend thee. Thine own words declare wisdom is higher than a fool can reach. I cease to wonder, and no more attempt thine height to explore, or fathom thy profound. But, O oh, my soul, sink not into despair. Virtue is near thee, and with gentle hand would now embrace thee, hovers o'er thine head. Fain would the heaven-born soul with her converse. Then seek, then court her for her promised bliss. Auspicious queen, thine heavenly pinion spread, And lead celestial chastity along. Lo, now her sacred retinue descends, Arrayed in glory from the orbs above. Attend me, virtue, throw my youthful years. 
O oh, leave me not to the false joys of time, but guide my steps to endless life and bliss. Greatness or goodness, say what I shall call thee, to give me an higher appellation still. Teach me a better strain, a nobler lay, or thou enthroned with cherubs in the realms of day. The End Read by Lorraine Montgomery for Lit to Go on the Web at fcit.usf.edu. Poems on Various Subjects, Religious and Moral by Phyllis Wheatley To the University of Cambridge in New England While an intrinsic ardor prompts to write, the muses promise to assist my pen. "'Twas not long since I left my native shore, "'the land of errors and Egyptian gloom. "'Father of mercy, t'was thy gracious hand "'brought me in safety from those dark abodes. "'Students, to you tis given to scan the heights "'above to traverse the ethereal space "'and mark the systems of revolving worlds. "'Still more, ye sons of science, ye receive "'the blissful news by messengers from heaven. "'How Jesus' blood for your redemption flows. "'See him with hands outstretched upon the cross.' Immense compassion in his bosom glows. He hears revilers, nor resents their scorn. What matchless mercy in the Son of God! When the whole human race by sin had fallen, he deigned to die that they might rise again and share with him in the sublimest skies, life without death and glory without end. Improve your privileges while they stay, ye pupils, and each hour redeem that bears or good or bad report of you to heaven. Let sin, that baneful evil to the soul, by you be shunned, nor once remit your guard. Suppress the deadly serpent in its egg. Ye blooming plants of human race divine, an Ethiop tells you tis your greatest foe. Its transient sweetness turns to endless pain, and in immense perdition sinks the soul. The End Read by Lorraine Montgomery for Lit to Go on the Web at fcit.usf.edu Poems on Various Subjects, Religious and Moral by Phyllis Wheatley to the King's Most Excellent Majesty, 1768. Your subjects hope, dread sire, the crown upon your brows may flourish long, and that your arm may in your God be strong. O oh, may your scepter numerous nations sway, and all with love and readiness obey. But how shall we the British king reward? Rule thou in peace our father and our lord. Midst the remembrance of thy favors past, the meanest peasants most admire the last. May George, beloved by all the nations round, live with heaven's choicest constant blessings crowned. Great God, direct, and guard him from on high, and from his head let every evil fly. And may each climb with equal gladness see, a monarch's smile can set his subjects free. The End Read by Lorraine Montgomery for Lit to Go on the Web at fcit.usf.edu Poems on Various Subjects, Religious and Moral, by Phyllis Wheatley On Being Brought from Africa to America T'was mercy brought me from my pagan land, taught my benighted soul to understand that there's a God, that there's a Savior too. Once I redemption neither fought nor knew, some view our sable race with scornful eye, their color is a diabolic dye. Remember, Christians, Negroes, black as Cain, may be refined and join the angelic train. The End
read by Lorraine Montgomery for lit to go on the web at fcit.usf.edu. Poems on Various Subjects, Religious and Moral, by Phyllis Wheatley. On the Death of the Reverend Dr. Sewell, 1769. Ere yet the morn its lovely blushes spread, see Sewell numbered with the happy dead. Hail, holy man, arrived at the immortal shore, though we shall hear thy warning voice no more. Come, let us all behold, with wishful eyes, the saint ascending to his native skies. From hence the prophet winged his rapturous way to the blessed mansions in eternal day. Then begging for the spirit of our God and panting eager for the same abode, come, let us all with the same vigor rise and take a prospect of the blissful skies while on our minds Christ's image is impressed, and the dear Savior glows in every breast. Thrice happy faint to find thy heaven at last, what compensation for the evils past! Great God, incomprehensible unknown, by sense we bow at thine exalted throne. O oh, while we beg thine excellence to feel, thy sacred spirit to our hearts reveal, and give us of that mercy to partake, which thou hast promised for the Saviour's sake. Sewell is dead. Swift-pinioned fame thus cried. Is Sewell dead? My trembling tongue replied. O oh, what a blessing in his flight denied! How oft for us the holy prophet prayed! How oft to us the word of life conveyed! By duty urged my mournful verse to close, I for his tomb this epitaph compose. Lo, here a man redeemed by Jesus' blood, A sinner once, but now a saint with God. Behold, ye rich, ye poor, ye fools, ye wise, not let his monument your heart surprise. Twill tell you what this holy man has done, which gives him brighter luster than the sun. Listen, ye happy, from your seats above. I speak sincerely while I speak and love. He fought the paths of piety and truth, by these made happy from his early youth. In blooming years that grace divine he felt, which rescues sinners from the chains of guilt. Mourn him, ye indigent, whom he has fed, and henceforth seek like him for living bread. Even Christ, the bread descending from above, and ask an interest in his saving love. Mourn him, ye youth, to whom he oft has told God's gracious wonders from the times of old. I, too, have caused this mighty loss to mourn, for he, my monitor, will not return. O oh, when shall we to his blessed state arrive, when the same graces in our bosoms thrive? The End Read by Lorraine Montgomery for lit to go on the web at fcit.usf.edu. Poems on Various Subjects, Religious and Moral, by Phyllis Wheatley. On the Death of the Reverend Mr. George Whitefield, 1770. Hail, happy saint, on thine immortal throne, possessed of glory, life, and bliss unknown. We hear no more the music of thy tongue, thy wanted auditories cease to throng. Thy sermons in unequaled accents flowed, and every bosom with devotion glowed. Thou didst in strains of eloquence refined inflame the heart and captivate the mind. Unhappy we the setting sun deplore, so glorious once, but ah, it shines no more. Behold the prophet in his towering flight, he leaves the earth for heaven's unmeasured height, and worlds unknown receive him from our sight.
There white field wings with rapid course his way, and sails to Zion through vast seas of day. Thy prayers, great saint, and thine incessant cries have pierced the bosom of thy native skies. Thou moon hast seen, and all the stars of light, how he has wrestled with his God by night. He prayed that grace in every heart might dwell. He longed to see America excel. He charged its youth that every grace divine should with full luster in their conduct shine. That Savior, which his soul did first receive, the greatest gift that even a God can give, he freely offered to the numerous throng that on his lips with listening pleasure hung. Take him, ye wretched, for your only good. Take him, ye starving sinners, for your food. Ye thirsty, come to this life-giving stream. Ye preachers, take him for your joyful theme. Take him, my dear Americans, he said. Be your complaints on his kind bosom laid. Take him, ye Africans, he longs for you. Impartial Savior is his title due. Washed in the fountain of redeeming blood, you shall be sons and kings and priests to God. Great Countess, we Americans revere thy name and mingle in thy grief sincere. New England deeply feels the orphans mourn, there more than father will no more return. But though arrested by the hand of death, Whitefield no more exerts his laboring breath. Yet let us view him in the eternal skies. Let every heart to this bright vision rise, while the tomb safe retains its sacred trust, till life divine reanimates his dust. The end. Read by Lorraine Montgomery for Lit to Go on the Web at fcit.usf.edu. Poems on Various Subjects, Religious and Moral, by Phyllis Wheatley. On the Death of a Young Lady of Five Years of Age. From dark abodes to fair ethereal light, the enraptured innocent has winged her flight. On the kind bosom of eternal love, she finds unknown beautitude above. This known, ye parents, nor her loss deplore, she feels the iron hand of pain no more. The dispensations of unerring grace should turn your sorrows into grateful praise. Let then no tears for her henceforward flow, no more distressed in our dark veil below. Her morning sun, which rose divinely bright, was quickly mantled with the gloom of night. But here in heaven's blessed bowers your Nancy fair, and learn to imitate her language there. Thou, Lord, whom I behold with glory crowned, by what sweet name and in what tuneful sound wilt thou be praised? Seraphic powers are faint, infinite love and majesty to paint. To thee let all their graceful voices raise, and saints and angels join their songs of praise. Perfect in bliss, she from her heavenly home looks down and smiling beckons you to come. Why then, fond parents, why these fruitless groans? Restrain your tears and cease your plaintive moans. Freed from a world of sin and snares and pain, why would you wish your daughter back again? No, bow resigned. Let hope your grief control and check the rising tumult of the soul. Calm in the prosperous and adverse day, adore the God who gives and takes away. I, him in all, his holy name revere, upright your actions and your hearts sincere, till having sailed through life's tempestuous sea and from its rocks and boisterous billows free, yourselves safe landed on the blissful shore shall join your happy babe to part no more. The End 
read by Lorraine Montgomery for lit to go on the web at fcit.usf.edu. Poems on Various Subjects, Religious and Moral, by Phyllis Wheatley. On the Death of a Young Gentleman. Who taught thee conflict with the powers of night, to vanquish Satan in the fields of light? Who strung thy feeble arms with might unknown? How great thy conquest, and how bright thy crown! War, with each princedom throne and power is o'er, the scene is ended to return no more. O oh, could my muse thy seat on high behold, how decked with laurel, how enriched with gold! O oh, could she hear what praise thine harp employs, how sweet thine anthems, how divine thy joys! What heavenly grandeur should exalt her strain! What holy raptures in her numbers reign! To soothe the troubles of the mind to peace, To still the tumult of life's tossing seas, To ease the anguish of the parent's heart, What shall my sympathizing verse impart? Where is the balm to heal so deep a wound? Where shall a sovereign remedy be found? Look, gracious spirit, from thine heavenly bower, and thy full joys into their bosoms pour, the raging temptus of their grief control, and spread the dawn of glory through the soul, to eye the path the saint departed trod, and trace him to the bosom of his God. The End Read by Lorraine Montgomery for Lit to Go on the Web at fcit.usf.edu. Poems on Various Subjects, Religious and Moral by Phyllis Wheatley To a Lady on the Death of Her Husband Grim monarch, sea deprived of vital breath, a young physician in the dust of death. Dost thou go on incessant to destroy our griefs to double and lay waste our joy? Enough, though never yet wast known to say, though millions die, the vassals of thy sway, nor youth, nor science, not the ties of love, nor aught on earth thy flinty heart can move. The friend, the spouse, from his dire dart to save. In vain we ask the sovereign of the grave. Fair mourner, there see thy loved Leonard laid, And o'er him spread the deep impervious shade. Closed are his eyes, and heavy fetters keep His senses bound in never-waking sleep. Till time shall cease, till many a starry world Shall fall from heaven in dire confused hurled, Till nature in her final wreck shall lie, And her last groan shall rend the azure sky. Not, not till then his active soul shall claim His body a divine immortal frame. But see the softly stealing tears apace, Pursue each other down the mourner's face. But cease thy tears, bid every sigh depart, And cast the load of anguish from thine heart. From the cold shell of his great soul arise, And look beyond, thou native of the skies. There fix thy view, where fleeter than the wind Thy Leonard mounts and leaves the earth behind. Thyself prepare to pass the veil of night To join forever on the hills of light. To thine embrace this joyful spirit moves, To thee the partner of his earthly loves. He welcomes thee to pleasures more refined And better suited to the immortal mind. The End Read by Lorraine Montgomery for Lit to Go on the Web at fcit.usf.edu. Poems on Various Subjects, Religious and Moral by Phyllis Wheatley. Goliath of Gath. 
ye martial powers, and all ye tuneful nine, inspire my song and aid my high design. The dreadful scenes and toils of war I write, the ardent warriors and the fields of fight. You best remember, and you best can sing, the acts of heroes to the vocal string. Resume the lays with which your sacred lyre did then the poet and the sage inspire. Now front to front the armies were displayed. Here Israel ranged, and there the foes arrayed. The hosts on two opposing mountains stood, thick as the foliage of the waving wood. Between them an extensive valley lay, o'er which the gleaming armor poured the day. When from the camp of the Philistine foes, dreadful to view, a mighty warrior rose. In the dire deeds of bleeding battle skilled, the monster stalks the terror of the field. From Gath he sprung, Goliath was his name, of fierce deportment and gigantic frame. A brazen helmet on his head was placed, a coat of mail his form terrific graced, the greaves his legs, the targe his shoulders pressed, dreadful in arms high towering o'er the rest. A spear he proudly waved, whose iron head, strange to relate, six hundred shekels weighed. He strode along and shook the ample field, while Phoebus blazed refulgent on his shield. Through Jacob's race a chilling horror ran, when thus the huge, enormous chief began. Say, what the cause that in this proud array you set your battle in the face of day? One hero find in all your vaunting train, then see who loses and who wins the plain. For he who wins in triumph may demand perpetual service from the vanquished land. Your armies I defy, your force despise, by far inferior in Philistia's eyes." Produce a man, and let us try the fight, decide the contest, and the victor's right. Thus challenged he, all Israel stood amazed, and every chief in consternation gazed. But Jesse's son in youthful bloom appears, and warlike courage far beyond his years. He left the folds, he left the flowery meads, and soft recesses of the sylvan shades." Now Israel's monarch and his troops arise, with peals of shouts ascending to the skies. In Ella's vale the scene of combat lies. When the fair morning blushed with orient red, what David's fire enjoined the sun obeyed. And swift of foot toward the trench he came, where glowed each bosom with the martial flame. He leaves his carriage to another's care, and runs to greet his brethren of the war. While yet they spake, the giant chief arose, repeats the challenge, and insults his foes. Struck with the sound and trembling at the view, affrighted Israel from its post withdrew. Observe ye this tremendous foe, they cried, who in proud vaunts our armies hath defied. Whoever lays him prostrate on the plain, freedom in Israel for his house shall gain. And on him wealth unknown the king will pour, and give his royal daughter for his dower. Then Jesse's youngest hope, my brethren say, what shall be done for him who takes away? Reproach from Jacob, who destroys the chief, and puts a period to his country's grief. He vaunts the honors of his arms abroad, and scorns the armies of the living God. Thus spoke the youth, the attentive people eyed, the wondrous hero, and again replied, such the rewards our monarch will bestow on him who conquers and destroys his foe. Eliab heard and kindled into ire to hear his shepherd brother thus inquire, and thus begun, what errand brought thee? Say, who keeps thy flock, or does it go astray? I know the base ambition of thine heart, but back in safety from the field depart." Eliab thus to Jesse's youngest heir expressed his wrath in accents most severe, when to his brother mildly he replied, What have I done, or what the cause to chide? 
The words were told before the king, who sent for the young hero to his royal tent. Before the monarch dauntless he began, for this Philistine fail no heart of man. I'll take the veil, and with the giant fight. I dread not all his boasts, nor all his might. When thus the king, darest thou a stripling go, and venture combat with so great a foe? who all his days has been injured to fight, and made its deeds his study and delight. Battles and bloodshed brought the monster forth, and clouds and whirlwinds ushered in his birth. When David thus, I kept the fleecy care, and out there rushed a lion and a bear. A tender lamb the hungry lion took, and with no other weapon than my crook, bold I pursued and chased him o'er the field, the prey delivered and the felon killed. As thus the lion and the bear I slew, so shall Goliath fall and all his crew. The God who saved me from these beasts of prey, by me this monster in the dust shall lay. So David spoke. The wondering king replied, Go thou with heaven and victory on thy side. This coat of mail, this sword gird on, he said, and placed a mighty helmet on his head. The coat, the sword, the helm he laid aside, nor chose to venture with those arms untried. Then took his staff, and to the neighboring brook, Instant he ran, and thence five pebbles took. Meantime descended to Philistia's son, a radiant cherub, and he thus begun. Goliath, well thou know'st thou hast defied, yon Hebrew armies and their god denied. Rebellious wretch, audacious worm, forbear, nor tempt the vengeance of their god too far. Them, who with his omnipotence contend, no eye shall pity and no arm defend. Proud as thou art, in short-lived glory great, I come to tell thee thine approaching fate. Regard my words, the judge of all the gods, beneath whose steps the towering mountain nods, will give thine armies to the savage brood that cut the liquid air or range the wood. Thee too a well-aimed pebble shall destroy, and thou shalt perish by a beardless boy. Such is the mandate from the realms above, and should I try the vengeance to remove, myself a rebel to my king would prove. Goliath say, shall grace to him be shown, who who dares heaven's monarch and insults his throne? Your words are lost on me, the giant cries, while fear and wrath contended in his eyes, when thus the messenger from heaven replies, Provoke no more Jehovah's awful hand to hurl its vengeance on thy guilty land. He grasps the thunder and he wings the storm, servants their sovereign's orders to perform. The angel spoke and turned his eyes away, adding new radiance to the rising day. Now David comes, the fatal stones demand, his left, the staff engaged, his better hand. The giant moved, and from his towering height surveyed the stripling and disdained the fight, and thus began, Am I a dog with thee? Bringst thou no armor but a staff to me? The gods on thee their volleyed curses pour, and beasts and birds of prey thy flesh devour. David undaunted thus, Thy spear and shield shall no protection to thy body yield. Jehovah's name, no other arms I bear. I ask no other in this glorious war. Today the Lord of hosts to me will give. Victory today thy doom thou shalt receive. The fate you threaten shall your own become, and beasts shall be your animated tomb. That all the earth's inhabitants may know that there's a God who governs all below. This great assembly too shall witness stand, that needs nor sword nor spear the Almighty's hand. The battle his, the conquest he bestows, and to our power consigns our hated foes. Thus David spoke, Goliath heard and came to meet the hero in the field of fame. 
Ah, fatal meeting to thy troops and thee, but thou wast deaf to the divine decree. Young David meets thee, meets thee not in vain. Tis thine to perish on the ensanguined plain. And now the youth, the forceful pebble slung, Philistia trembled as it whizzed along. In his dread forehead, where the helmet ends, Just o'er the brows the well-aimed stone descends. It pierced the skull and shattered all the brain. Prone on his face he tumbled to the plain. Goliath's fall no smaller terror yields Than riving thunders in aerial fields. The soul still lingered in its loved abode, till conquering David o'er the giant strode. Goliath's sword then laid its master dead, and from the body hewed the ghastly head. The blood in gushing torrents drenched the plains. The soul found passage through the spouting veins. And now aloud the illustrious victor said, "'Where are your boastings now, your champions dead?' Scarce had he spoke when the Philistines fled, but fled in vain the conqueror swift pursued. What scenes of slaughter, and what seas of blood! There, Saul, thy thousands grasped the empurpled sand, in pangs of death the conquest of thine hand, and David, there were thy ten thousands laid. Thus Israel's damsels musically played. Near Gath and Edron many a hero lay, breathed out their souls and cursed the light of day. Their fury, quenched by death, no longer burns, and David with Goliath's head returns. To Salem brought, but in his tent he placed the load of armor which the giant graced. His monarch saw him coming from the war, and thus demanded of the son of Ner. "'Say, who is this amazing youth?' he cried." When thus the leader of the host replied, As lives thy soul, I know not whence he sprung, So great in prowess, though in years so young. Inquire whose son is he, the sovereign said, Before whose conquering arm Philistia fled, Before the king behold the stripling stand, Goliath's head depending from his hand. To him the king, say of what martial line Art thou, young hero, and what sire was thine? He humbly thus, the son of Jesse, I, I came the glories of the field to try. Small is my tribe, but valiant in the fight, Small is my city, but thy royal right. Then take the promised gifts, the monarch cried, Conferring riches and the royal bride. Knit to my soul, for ever thou remain With me, nor quit my regal roof again. The End Read by Lorraine Montgomery for Lit to Go on the Web at fcit.usf.edu. Poems on Various Subjects, Religious and Moral by Phyllis Wheatley To a Lady on the Death of Three Relations we trace the power of death from tomb to tomb, and his are all the ages yet to come. Tis his to call the planets from on high, to blacken Phoebus and dissolve the sky. His too, when all in his dark realms are hurled, from its firm base to shake the solid world. His fatal scepter rules the spacious whole, and trembling nature rocks from pole to pole. Awful he moves, and wide his wings are spread. Behold thy brother numbered with the dead. From bondage freed, the exulting spirit flies beyond Olympus and these starry skies. Lost in our woe for thee, blessed shade we mourn, in vain, to earth thou never must return. Thy sisters too, fair mourner, feel the dart of death, and with fresh torture rend thine heart. Weep not for them, and leave the world behind, as a young plant by hurricanes uptorn, so near its parent lies the newly born, but midst the bright ethereal train behold, it shines superior on a throne of gold. Then, mourner, cease, let hope thy tears restrain, smile on the tomb, and soothe the raging pain." 
On yon blessed regions fix thy longing view, mindless of sublunary scenes below. Ascend the sacred mount in thought arise, and seek substantial and immortal joys. Where hope receives, where faith to vision springs, and raptured seraphs tune the immortal strings to strains ecstatic, thou the chorus join, and to thy father tune the praise divine. The End Read by Lorraine Montgomery for lit to go on the web at fcit.usf.edu. Poems on Various Subjects, Religious and Moral by Phyllis Wheatley To a Clergyman on the Death of His Lady Where contemplation finds her sacred spring, Where heavenly music makes the arches ring, Where virtue reigns unsullied and divine, Where wisdom throned and all the graces shine, There sits thy spouse amidst the radiant throng, while praise eternal warbles from her tongue. There choirs angelic shout her welcome round, with perfect bliss and peerless glory crowned. While thy dear mate, to flesh no more confined, exults a blessed, a heaven-ascended mind, say in thy breast, shall floods of sorrow rise? Say, shall its torrents overwhelm thine eyes? Amid the seats of heaven a place is free, and angels open their bright ranks for thee. For thee they wait, and with expectant eye thy spouse leans downward from the imperial sky. O oh, come away, her longing spirit cries, and share with me the raptures of the skies. Our bliss divine to mortals is unknown, immortal life and glory are our own. There, too, may the dear pledges of our love arrive and taste with us the joys above. Attune the harp to more than mortal lays and join with us the tribute of their praise. To him who died stern justice to stone and make eternal glory all our own. He in his death slew ours, and as he rose, he crushed the dire dominion of our foes. Vain were their hopes to put the god to flight, chain us to hell, and bar the gates of light. She spoke, and turned from mortal scenes her eyes, which beamed celestial radiance o'er the skies. Then, thou dear man, no more with grief retire, let grief no longer damp devotion's fire. But rise sublime, to equal bliss aspire, thy sighs no more be wafted by the wind." No more complain, but be to heaven resigned. T'was thine to unfold the oracles divine. To soothe our woes the task was also thine. Now sorrow is incumbent on thy heart. Permit the muse a cordial to impart. Who can to thee their tenderest aid refuse? To dry thy tears, how longs the heavenly muse? The End Read by Lorraine Montgomery for lit to go on the web at fcit.usf.edu. Poems on Various Subjects Religious and Moral by Phyllis Wheatley A Hymn to the Morning Attend my lays, ye ever-honored nine, Assist my labors, and my strains refine. In smoothest numbers pour the notes along, For bright Aurora now demands my song. Aurora, hail, and all the thousand dyes Which deck thy progress through the vaulted skies. The morn awakes and wide extends her rays, On every leaf the gentle zephyr plays. Harmonious lays the feathered race resume, Dart the bright eye and shake the painted plume. Ye shady groves, ye verdant gloom display, To shield your poet from the burning day. Calliope, awake the sacred lyre, While thy fair sisters fan the pleasing fire. 
the bowers, the gales, the variegated skies, in all their pleasures in my bosom rise. See in the east the illustrious king of day, his rising radiance drives the shades away. But, oh, I feel his fervid beams too strong, and scarce begun concludes the abortive song. The End Read by Lorraine Montgomery for lit to go on the web at fcit.usf.edu.